Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Sunday Politics, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimalo in Lagos. Tonight we shall be focusing on the happenings in Lagos State and uh, the over three years or so of the administration of Governor Babajide Sanwolu. Governor Sawolu was elected in 2019, governorship election in the state of city in Akinwumi Ambadi. He became the candidate of the APC in the 2023 governorship election after emerging uh, from the party's primary. And the dynamics of that race of the governorship election in Lagos is totally different now. So those dynamics uh, will mean a lot in the politics of 2023 election. Tonight, we first and foremost focus on governance of the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. And later on, we'll talk a bit of politics with Governor Sonwoli. I'm being joined live in our Lagos studio here by the Governor of Lagos State, Governor Babajide Sonwolu. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, Thank for joining us. Thank you very, very much for having me. I think uh, it would be a good note to start on security because um, I saw that you had a meeting with uh, some of the security um, chiefs in, in Lagos, and uh, you came to assure Lagosians that all is well. But let me first and foremost ask, with the recent security threats that has exposed not only Lagos, but the nation's uh, defenses across board, what would you say to Lagosians tonight, uh, your proactive measures in stopping the potentials and the capacity of these elements that are wanting to infiltrate the state? Well, thank you very much, Yom. Thank you again for having me. Um, you know, security is also seen as the bedrock of any good governance, because what we preach is that we want to ensure that we save the life of our people, properties, and life, you know. And these are some of the things that we, we campaign on. And if you look at my team's agenda, the last word here, you know, which is S, is security and good governance. So it's not something that is just waking up to. It was something that we thought of, it was something that we dreamt, and we knew we wanted to deal with it. But to answer the question is to look at the security architecture in Lagos. You know, I was opportune to be the first interim chairman of the Security Trust Fund, and I was part of the board for four years, you know, when, when we set up that in 2008. So what do you see in Lagos? Outside of the regular Lagos State Police Command, you know, it's that our government have been able to strengthen, you know, the um, rapid response squad. In fact, we have about 2,500 men that are in rapid response squad. We also have about 500, 600 men in the tax force, apart from the fact that we have access to two, three, you know, uh, MOPO formation in Lagos. Lagos also has about 15 area commanders and about 110, you know, um, um, devotional police officers. So what it means is that, you know, in that small space of 3,650 square kilometers, you have this whole entire, you know, gamut of security architecture. So what happens is we have three layers of interventions in Lagos. The regular police in the event of a day-to-day -day issues that everybody wants to, I mean, relate to. But when you have tactical um, um, interventions, the men of the RRS are usually the one that you see, you know, coming out first. And when it has to do with a direct intervention from the governor's office, then you can also see, you know, the men of the, of the tax force. So in the last three years or three and a half years, we've also been supporting all the security architecture in the state, not only the police, you know, and we've given them over 260 vehicles, you know, in the last two, two and a half, three years. We've also extended similar things to other security architecture, you know, the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian Air Force, under, you know, a program called Operation Wasset, sorry, OPMENSA, under a global called OPMENSA. Right, so with all of that, right, they continue to speak to each other. The Department of State Security, we continue to also support them on equipment because we know security is not cheap. So it's not something that we are starting today. It was something that we started right from day one, ensuring that what we need to do, we are not waiting for anybody, what we need to do in Lagos to make sure that they are motivated, they have equipment to work with, they have logistic support, and they have the well with that. They have access to me. So that's what has helped us you know, pretty much to be able to, you know, um, speak to the issues and be able to deal with them when they do occur, you know, in terms of the architecture of it. Like I said, there are three layers. But what we have also now done now is we're coming out of the regular police formation to also extend the same security architecture to other security um, 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 agencies in, in Lagos, NDLEA, you know, um, um, Civil Defense Corps, um, correctional facilities, 
um, Nigerian Immigration Service, and of course, the neighborhood watch that we also have. So it is the entire tripod, you know, that is now activated. See something, say something, that is now activated as various security officials to know that everybody has, you know, a, a box to take. Everybody has a responsibility to ensure that whatever you need or you notice or you, you, you observe in your own sphere of, 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 of engagement, mm -hmm. escalate it, have access to the people that can come and rescue the station. So those are some of the things we agreed to two days ago to say that we need to collaborate a lot more. We need to share information. It's not one person reciting all the information. Share information. If you observe something, escalate it. Mm -hmm. And we're also taking it to the citizens. You know, our CDCs, our CDs, are people that have been working with us. You know, they have over 100 and 1,100 1, of them in various associations. And these are people that we take intelligence from. The intels we take from them, the Lagos State Neighborhood Watch are the ones that process it in a way and manner that we can send it to the Nigerian I mean, police. Uh, so, 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 yeah. so that architecture yeah. is working for us. Physically speaking, Physically that's what speaking. we can, that's yeah. what we're deploying for yeah. citizens to see. Yeah. Uh, the NSAS scenarios uh, gave, uh, gave Lagos out on how porous Lagos may could be uh, when you've had people who have already infiltrated and people, because at some point, security agencies were saying, no, we do not know some of these guys. These guys were just, and people will say, uh, these guys are in the corners, in the, in the little corners of some of the streets. Now, the question when we talk about security is intelligence. Yeah. Uh, are there things that we do not see or we cannot see? That is uh, available that, with, that you are, yeah. that, that you have yeah. in gathering intelligence. Yes. Uh, there are CCTVs around the city. What are that digital means of which uh, you carry out or gather intelligence that can give Lagosians peace of mind? So, so we, I will not go into details to say specific. This is where a camera is and all sorts. But we are working with the Department of State Security, who have the primary role for intelligence. You know, they are the ones that comb nukes and crannies. I get telephone text messages almost on a daily basis that I share with them. In this area, we notice some movements in the bush. In this area, we notice some scrupulous people in an abandoned building. In this area, we think the movement here doesn't speak to what we know in this neighborhood. And so, neighborhood watch also pick all of it. Like I said, intelligence is from, it's from the grassroots, from the neighborhood watch, sorry, from the CDC, CDA, to the neighborhood watch, now to the security formation. And Battle of state security, who goes around the city, right? That is still being um, physical. But like you said, technology, you are aware that we're deploying, you know, our smart city, you know, intervention in the state. We're about, you know, the one that is doing it aggressively, right? And to date, we're installing close to 2,000 CCTV cameras all around the city, right? We're turning some of them, you know, into, into traffic management. We're using some of them for traffic control. But when there's a need, you also can review, you know, security activity. We're just building a new data center for this kind of implementation. But I cannot begin to give the full detail, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, because it's also security. And we're going to be making this available, right, to the um, Department of State Security, you know, so that they also can review some of these things and can have access to it. So it's, it's a work in a path. And it's something that the citizens need to be reassured. Is right? it is it a command and control center that used to be in Allah? In Allah. Okay, is it still there? So it's still there. Yes. And it, does it still have the facility? Absolutely. Because I've uh, had to report security at some yeah. point in Lagos, yes. and I've been uh, I've been taking on a tour of that facility. Absolutely. That you can almost see the whole of Lagos you know, uh, on one on one screen. Those are years ago. See, but I don't know if this. I the, built that facility. When you were the chair of... Uh, when I was the chairman of, of the trust fund. I was. I was on that. So I know everything we've put in there. We need to retool a few things, which we're currently doing. You know, some system needs to be... Needs to be which we have done. We've actually even changed the orientation and the, and, and the inclusion of the place. But beyond even all of that, in our ministry, right, we're building a new data room, a new data center that will specific for security. Specific for security. It's coming to the system already. We've got shipment of about... 21 containers that has arrived about two months ago. And so all those deployments are happening gradually. And we'll spend a lot of money. We're not just, I mean, waiting for anybody to help us out. Here. This is from uh, uh, security uh, voting, or is it for, for, from the budget? So it's from the budget. It's at two layers, because you also can deploy those infrastructure for other things. You know, um, technology, for example, you know, having access, you know, even in school, 
um, using it because once the fiber is there, right, what carries it, right, can be not only for security, can be used in hospitals, can be used in schools, can be used, you know, to ensure that government services are. So we're building the architecture, we're building the backbone, and security will be one of the users of that backbone. So that's how it's worked. That's why it's on the budget. Yeah, Lagos is very central. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you and I know that um, uh, as a commercial nerve yeah. of the country, I mean, this is where uh, a, a huge percentage of the nation's commerce and trade uh, emanates Besides. from. Uh, so yeah. now we know how important well, that Lagos needs to be secured. Uh, you have uh, states uh, like Oyo and Ogumbodri in Lagos and water uh, largely on one side. Now, so you are talking about physical security. You look at also how security is also need to be covered on the side of the water. Now, you did um, a ban of Okada which security is one of the reasons. Are you sticking to that or are you stretching or extending it further? Do you see any more danger in the usage of Okada in Lagos? Thank you. Well, just so first, com com I mean, correct. The only border that I have, you know, there is a land border is Ogun States. The other border that I have is the Atlantic Ocean and water. So it's only one piece, it's only one state that we look at. So it's easier for you then? A, a lot easier. So in you terms work with of, your brother in, uh, well, in Ogun it, State? So we, well. have, we actually have a joint commission, Lagos Ogun Joint Commission, where we do things around fiscal planning approval, transportation approval, and security issues. But to speak directly to the Okada thing, we've seen tremendous, tremendous improvement, right, in the areas in which it's been banned. In fact, people have written to me to commend, you know, not only have we seen a drop in, in, in um, issues around security, you know, robbery in car, you know, um, traffic robberies and all of this, we've also seen a significant drop in accidents. You know, we, we don't see people being lame, you know, cutting of limbs in our hospitals again, because these were um, um, reckless driving that, that, that usually terminates, you know, uh, people's life, you know, um, um, unexpectedly. So we've seen tremendous improvement in that area. Do you have the statistics to support that? Oh, yeah, I mean, in terms of, in terms of death, it's dropping. You know, okay. yeah, in the last two months, right, we've, at the peak of it, we're seeing about 550 or Qatar-related accident at the peak of it in January, February. Per now, month? Per month. At the, now it's coming down to less than 100 direct or Qatar accident that we've seen you know, from our hospitals that, ah, what happened? It was knocked down by an Okada. We've seen. And also um, um, robberies in traffic. It's significantly gone down. Right? And so one of the things that we also tell RRS is we need to have a lot of pin down positions, you know, because it's with Okada, they used to do, you know, all of to the maneuver and, uh, yeah. Exactly. So they do a lot of pin down and they do, you know, um, um, pedestrian monitoring. They just need to park and walk around, make sure that people can see them and can feel them. These are some of the things um, that, okay. that is happening around the city. Uh, all right. L l let's go further because we have a lot, um, a lot of stops that, that we need to uh, take on the, on the program yeah. in terms of the issues. Now, uh, you have been criticized as perhaps the only governor in the all of the southwest region that uh, uh, downplayed the role of Amatekun security network, which some have said that have worked very well in other parts of the region. And the reason they speculate is that of politics. Would you be considering activating the security outfit, uh, the, the southwest governors, you are what part of them, you've considered it as a great answer to solving insecurity problem in the southwest region? It's a great initiative. It's a great, I mean, idea and I commend, I was part of it and I commend my, my colleagues for this. But this is what we forgot. I gave them even a template for Amotec in terms of the law. We have a legal state neighborhood watch. These are almost 7,000 men that has been trained, that has been energized, that are working on a day-to-day -day in the state. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. So that, that's the Lagos Amotec? That's in Lagos Amotec. And they know and they appreciate it. You know, and we've supported in all of the equipment they need, they, they ask all of us to buy. I have continued to participate in, in that space. It's the template of even how we set it up that will pass around, you know, our, our neighboring state, and that's what everybody has copied. It's just in, there's nothing in the color of the uniform. It's how efficient and how effective is the security thing. And we believe that the neighborhood, almost 7,000 of them are working closely with the Nigerian police force. They're the ones, on a weekly basis, I get a report that on a weekly basis, in almost all nukes and crannies, you know, they escalate these things to the Nigerian police force. And that's one of the things that has helped us to be able to um, directly intervene and nip some of the things that, that you probably also would not have been aware of. Because I get the report on a daily basis.
Now, um, it's interesting that you have clarified that because yeah. there are a lot of people who think no, that. I mean, it's basically on politics. No, that someone, ab ab Governor ab absolutely. Is not doing absolutely. They, are my, they are my brothers. We both conceived it. You know, and, we're saying, and like I said, you know, we thought of it as, as a boundary you know, intervention. That, you know, the issues then was that something will happen in the kitty, they run into Ondo. Something will happen in Ondo, they run into Oyo. We said, okay, let's set up something where we can police the border patrols, you know. We, uh, we're not trained away the Nigerian police, but we said, where we can police the border. And like I told you, the only border, in fact, I'm borderless with Ogun. You know, we, you don't even see it. There are no, there are no bushes anywhere. You know, so it's really for but me. On, on this stretch of road, a lot of people will say, oh, the Lagos is about an expressway. Yeah, but my, As a linkage. But my brother is <laughs> with in, is in, is in, is in, is in is Shagamu. In, no, my yeah. brother here is in, in Lagos Baja. <laughs> you know, before even Kara Market, you, you know, welcome you to the state. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I really cannot, I have a love to deal with back there. I cannot begin to you know, carry on the pressure it's of... It's here as a state, uh, is there a means by which Lagos State can intercept within this border Absolutely. that you're talking about? So, because if there is a so truckload no, of infiltrators, me, let me how do you detect absolute, it? Absolutely. In fact, we are, we are closer to Kara, to Mowe, than Abeokuta. So we do the interventions, actually. We do it currently, as we speak. The last time when there was a, a, a truck breakdown on this express is our own Lasema. Even just this morning, just this morning, just to tell you, at 4.30, 5 o'clock this morning, some water, you know, on, on, the, on, the, on the other side of Lagos, right? There was a truck, there was a massive, you know, 40-foot that, that got, that, got, I mean, um, um, that slipped off, you know? It was, it was La Sema that we, we relate with ourselves. And that's why I said, between ourselves at Ogun State, there's a joint understanding, you know? So they are like bother, you know, um, relationships that are borderless. So we can actually go in there, right, solve what the problem is, and come back. But when it comes to specific security issues that they both CPs need to talk to each other, I'm sure they, they activate that and, and they talk to one another regularly. So I was asking, how do you detect if there is an infiltrator that is coming into Lagos? For example, there was a time that to alert uh, that uh, there is a truckload of possible so what, infiltrators what, so who, who are coming into did, the city. Yeah, one of the things we did at our meeting on Friday is that we've actually pushed a physical, you know, stop and search. We've pushed it physical into Ogun State because there is no space on the express road where they can do anything, even on this express road that is not too far off. So we've actually pushed it. So you see men of the Lagos State Police Command, you see men of the OP Mensa in, in physical land in Ogun State trying to also stop, you know, and activate and, like you said, you know, nibbing about, you know, whatever it is that might be coming into this. They've had instances where they've turned people back right on this express road, not being able to explain what they were coming to do. Uh, how much of registration of residents and citizens of Lagos have you done? How can you digitally identify people? Because so Lagos is not, is not like many other states so in the we, country. We, we, invited, we invited you, and I'm sure channels were represented three weeks ago when we relaunched the Lastra card. You know, this is like the highest digital, you know, um, citizens card that you have in this country. We just relaunched it you know, three, we three weeks ago, right here in The question Nigeria. is, how much of that do you have? On, on the database now, we have about six million. Of Lagosians? Of Lagosians, yes. Of the, the over database. 20 million? Of the over 20 million. We have six million, you know, that are registered in the database. How long do you think it can take to capture the whole of Lagos? Well, I mean, so it's something that people also need to come up to. And so that's why communication, that's why the likes of you also need to help us populate that. This is available, and these are the benefits that come with it. It's planning. Is for us to know who is where and how can we respond better. Will it, will it come time. to a point that you have to enforce that we you will. don't have it? We, we you will. You cannot reside we will. in Lagos. We, maybe not reside. We will enforce it to the extent that you might not be able to get some government services. You want to come to our hospital? You want to attend our school? You want to come to our... It will get to that. The reason why I'm asking, you talked about CCTV. Yeah. In other crimes, if CCTV camera picks your face, yeah. they're able to go through a biometrics check and identify where you reside, who you are, who your, your crime uh, background, background and all of that. That's the re one of the reasons why I'm asking. So, so, so the, when, when you're installing the CCTV yeah. cameras, how do you then uh, process it? That's the big I, question. I, I understand. So one of the problems we have in this country is that data resides in so many places, in silos. The same data you're talking about, I can assure you there are some other federal agencies that have it. So that's why we're also, NIMSI and all of this, we're collaborating with all of them. This data, we have enough platform, we have enough space to be able to store them. Share some of these things with us. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Technology is the same technology everywhere. So we don't want to go, begin to knock on people's door and want to say, I want to take your picture. No. 
if you have it, even if it is in, you know, um, 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 passport, you know, um, registration or some as simple as that, you know, in your registration in your bank, ha let us have access to some of these things. And it can reside, you know, in a database where security can have access to. Some of these things are available. It's just that those agencies are not speaking to, the, to they are not speaking to each other deliberately or lack of knowledge. So it's the responsibility for you and I to ensure that we escalate this and we bring them to sit to each other and say, this is what we need to use this for. So how much of work do you need to do with NIMSI? Because NIMSI seems to They are have... working with us. They are actually working with us. I must commend them. They are working with us on this. OK. Yes. So let's move quickly because we have some other. So now, talking about security, now you are building. Of course, we'll get into that. You're spending a lot of money on rail services in yeah. Lagos. And the question is, how secured will those be? Now, as a proactive measure, with what happened on the Kaduna uh, Abuja bound train that was attacked in March, where over 60 persons were uh, attacked by terrorists and, and abducted. In your development of rail service in Lagos, the question is, are you considering measures to protect the rails from attacks, a means of guaranteeing saf safety of passengers? Thank you very much. You know, Coincidentally, today, I've been on the road. I went on a red line inspection. So I, I started the journey from um, Agigi and all the way to Ibutimeta. Six stations, four bridges over passes, and you know, um, the crew of Channel also were with us on that journey. So what did we see? We've seen that on our journey to ensure that we have a real infrastructure ready in Lagos State by December is on track, is on budget, and we'll meet those deadlines. What are the things that we're doing? This is different from the Kaduna um, Abuja rail. Why? This is an intra-city rail network. It's not an intercity. It's not a two, 300 kilometer rail. This is a 30, 35 in a city rail infrastructure. So what you need to do is to ensure that at the inlet of each of your train stations, you have sufficient CCTV cameras. You have a documentary of who has come in into the station. Ensure that you also have scanners when people are going to board, you know, the train. How are your tone stars working? How do you record the movement of people so that you can have, you know, a, a, a well-robust, you know, counting system? How is your payment system? Is your payment system something that you can track at the back end? You know, it's not, we're, we're putting a payment system that is, that is cashless. You're not going to come to pay by cash, you know, on the counter, you must have a prepaid card and the rest of it. So these are some of the things, in our view, that would deter would-be criminally minded people, you know, because they will not be passengers, that would deter them. That's one. Secondly, the entire rail track are going to be fenced up. You know, they are going to be walled off. Unlike what we saw Unlike, in um, yeah. uh, um, uh, crossing, uh, cross, Agbado crossing, Ikeja, uh, Absolutely uh, not. crossing they, where People were being knocked down. So, so you go there now. There are bridges that were built. There, we, are, we are building vehicular bridges. So you are insulating them absolutely from, from possible attacks. Absolutely, we're insulating them from possible. We're even insulating vehicles. Vehicles are not going to be crossing on those rail tracks. You know, in Kejalong, we've done a bridge there. You know, Mushi, we've done a bridge there. Yaba, we've done a bridge there. You know, most difficult one. You know, old old Apapa Road from um, um, Muritalama. We're doing a bridge there. So vehicles will go on top. Passengers will go on top and having opportunity to do complete wall off, complete wall off, you know, of, of, of the rail track so that you don't even have any. Go to on the blue line, blue line from from uh, Maltu to Orile to, to National Trade Fair. It's been wall off completely, completely. And so that's the kind of thing that's also going to happen on the red, on the red line. Once that is done and you have sufficient security um, 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 monitoring, you know, as people are coming into the, into the stations and they are, they are getting out, if anything happens, you can also go back and, 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 and track. Proactive, preemptive measures, uh, fantastic uh, to think about how you can preempt and work against it from happening. But should it happen? Now, the question is, when attacks happen in Nigeria, it takes a whole lot of time before there is uh, a response. That, that's one big question. Are you thinking about response across the rail line such that should there even be a breakdown? Because there are talks about rails, uh, trains breaking down, and it takes several hours before there, there is a rescue. So we, we have the best professionals in this, you know, on, 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 on our payroll already. And we've, we've thought through, you know, the entire end-to-end, -end, you know, possibilities of things that can happen, right? We even have a team of policemen that are dedicated 
on the blue line rail on the, on the blue line rail corridor even before it gets started to clean up you know and to ensure that there are no miscreants you know there are no hoodlums you know on that on that entire corridor but professionally professionally how you tend to mitigate some of the concerns you know that you have is to ensure that you have core professionals who are running your train service ensure that you know your, your system is is up to date that you can ensure that is a cashless system the moment people know that there's a back end that can know that she Kibalu came to these stations based on the way in manner in which we've collected your money you think twice you are not going to appear you know and just pay and just think you can walk away no the moment they know that you are going to go through a turnstile who have also recorded you to go and bought the train, they will think twice. So these are some of the things that we're ensuring that we put in place. And in the event of anything whatsoever happening, like I said to you, there are still cameras that are going to be there, and people will play back and ensure that we can nip this in the board, you know, and have, uh, and well, have redundancy. Yeah. You know, because you talk about trains dropping, that our trains will never, mm. they will not. Do you have, for example, helicopter service to monitor? Does, no, does Lagos it, say it doesn't. Have... We have everybody, it's, they are very, these are very short. You know, these journeys are like, five. you know what we're trying to do, Shiu? We're trying to reduce a two hour journey into a 25 minutes journey. So it's, it's in the city, we're not going to another city, it's in the city. So they are all like, you know, five minutes, Four minutes, five minutes, seven minutes at best, you know, head on, you know, from one station to another, you know, five, you know, five I mean, seven minutes. Ni Nigerians are now very skeptical about a lot of things because of security. So I'm asking these questions on behalf of a lot of them yeah, I, I who, it. when they heard about the Kaduna, they thought to themselves, oh, just when we thought that uh, train, uh, right. trains are getting back on, yeah. on the rail track in Nigeria. This happened. So if this is going to come on stream in Lagos, you need a whole lot of work to sensitize Lagosians that these things are safe. And that's why I'm asking the question. And so, now, so, so that's why you also need to explain. None of this journey passes through an unmanned bush. This is intra-city, is it a city? Does Lagos have bushes? We don't. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. So it's all developments all around the corridor. Everybody's looking right from your bedroom. You see the train pass. That's what it means. Right from your bedroom, from your office, you are looking at the train pass. You are not going into a bush. You are going into a corridor that is totally developed, hundred percent developed. We, we, we saw some arguments yes. about the minister of transportation who was talking about that he proposed a monitoring mechanism, but it wasn't approved. Well, uh, I, I, no, I'm not asking you about that. No, I'm asking if there is a special monitoring uh, 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 mechanism to monitor the, the, the train service from end to end. There, there will be. There will be. And they're called signalizations. You know, once you have a foolproof signalization right from your laptop or from your computer, you will know that this train is meant to, uh, to arrive in three minutes. If there's a delay of 30 seconds, you know there's something wrong. You know, that's where the professionalism comes into play. All right. I understand that you got some of the coaches from Wisconsin in the United States. No, from um, Milwaukee, actually. M Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Milwaukee is Milwaukee. in Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, well, okay, well, yeah. so you beat me there. I thought my job is better than you. Yes, because I had my fellowship there as well. Ah, okay. I know they're very well. Ah, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so we got the red line from Milwaukee. You know, interestingly, that, those trains were, were meant to be from, Will, from uh, Milwaukee to Chicago, you know, so it's, it's a short haul, you know, um, but something happened and we're able to pick it. But the other sets are actually coming from China on the blue line, okay. right? And both of them are ready. I mean, they're being sent to the ports and they should be shipped. I'm know. seeing some pictures about, uh, okay. of the ones that are already uh, marked coupled together, with coupled yeah. and the, fact, the, color. the, the Lamata Absolutely. insignia is already Absolutely. put on it. Absolutely. So uh, the red line is supposed to be flagged off when? Um, the, the, the blue will happen first okay. by December. The red line will be first quarter next year. But all of the infrastructure, hard infrastructure, will be ready for the end of the year. For, so the, for the blue line, the infrastructure is already? Almost ready. Okay. The blue line, the infrastructure are far, slightly ahead of the red line. Okay. You know, because the, the difference is this, you know, and we need to make this point. The red line was conceived by our administration, and we did excited that we're completing it within our first tenure, you know, within two years. So you years. started it? You I conceived started and it. started the red started line? It. Yes, absolutely. But we inherited the blue line, right? And we've actually done a lot more than what we've done in the last five years on the blue line as well. Mm. So uh, give us just briefly, where does the blue line start and where does it terminate? Okay. So the phase one of it, which is what we'll finish, will start from mile two and will terminate at Marina. Marina is an iconic station for the blue line, right? That's the phase one. The phase two of it will now push you back from mile two. It will go all the way to Okokomaiko. The beauty of the phase two is that it's at grid, meaning it's at ground level. Mm -hmm. there, are no over, there are no overhead. It's not building like the one in Marina that is like a bridge. 
So it's going to be faster and quicker for us to, and the corridor is there, to lay the tracks and be able to finish it. So that's a phase two of it. But the phase one, we're going to start five stations from mile two to marina. We believe there's enough traffic on it. And for the red line, it starts from Agbado, which is outskirts of Lagos, to Iju, to Agege, to Oshodi, to Moshi, to Yaba, to Ibutemeta. So that's, that's, the, that's the red line. Mm -hmm. So it starts from Agbado all the way to um, um, Ibutemeta at the first instant. The first two of that one, too, incidentally, we wanted to do a, 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 a lagoon crossing and get onto, and get onto Marina mm -hmm. at some, some time in the future. You know, so that's the phase two of, of that one as well. Interesting. And so, outside of that, those two, Shewun, we have four other lines that we're doing extensive feasibility studies on. We've committed huge resources mm -hmm. to be able to do viability feasibility studies on. They should be ready before the end of the year. And we've seen both local and international investors who are ready. Because we've, we've actually demonstrated this as a, as a sub-national. We're the only sub-national anywhere in the world that is doing a real by itself. People talk about Kenya, people talk about Nairobi, so yeah, um, track, they talk about the one in Ethiopia. Go and ask. It's the sovereign that is doing it. It's not the city of Addis Ababa. But you're doing this on loans? We, this, well, no, we're, 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 we're being very creative in our financing. A lot of our budgetary is there, but we're very, very creative also with the loan. All right. If you want me to tell you about the loan, I can tell you. Single digit, eight year money, you can't get it anywhere. Where did you get it from? From Nigeria. From local banks? From local banks. I'm extremely very impressed with them. All right. Single because digits. They have their headquarters here. Oh, so, well, I mean, we, so they're applying back. We are all stakeholders, <laughs> and they are with us in the, in the Lagos journey. We'll, we'll take a break, uh, Governor of San Olu. When we, when we come back, issues of the gridlock in Lagos. The APAPA looks so much like a tough chew for you. You said you were going to fix it. What is happening with it? We'll ask you questions. Then we'll go into politics. Your re-election bid, what is going to happen? There's a lot of uh, political competition for you in Lagos, which you face in the coming months. We'll take a break, everyone. And we come, when we come back, our chat continues with Governor Sawolu of Lagos. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. Governor Babaji Desanwoli, the governor of Lagos State, has been talking with us on the program. Let's continue our conversation on the state of affairs in Lagos. Um, let's talk about the Apapa gridlock situation. It appears that your intervention was short-lived. You promised that you're going to fix it. What happened? Chung, I'm looking straight into the camera. I have fixed Apapa gridlock. And there's no apology to that. I have fixed it. So let me tell you, and you can ask, I'm a national television, right? What we've done, even MPA had written letters to commend us. All of the major businesses in Apapa have written letters. I get daily video recording of what is happening in Apapa. I've gotten the one for today, and I'm sure I'll get tomorrow morning. Between 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock, between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock, on a daily basis, and it's moving. Residents in Apapa have written to me to thank us. What used to take two hours, three hours, now takes them 15, 20 minutes journey. But what is the remainder of the problem? We're doing federal government. They're doing the road from Sunrise in MTN from the Maltu end going towards Apapa. That is a portion that has not been completed. I think it's a stretch not more than less than a kilometer or something. So that stretch needs to be completed for you to have a complete um, clean up of it. However, you still have trailers on some of these roads. And why so? You have trailers because, you know, the ETO system that um, um, MPA had set up, which is actually working, but there's been a lot of sabotage amongst themselves, right? That's number one. Number two is also that they do not have enough trailer parks, trailer parks that can take these this, um, um, containers, these um, articulated um, trucks off the road. We are building some one for them, you know, by Orile, which, I mean, we've signed a concession with someone. It's supposed to, I mean, be able to relieve about 2,000, 2,500, you know, and, and, and off, the, off, the, off, the, off the road. So one of the things we said is that if you have an effective call-up system, what you should do is that if your truck has not been called, you don't have any business coming into a papa area. That's, that's the only thing that has not been fully, fully, fully implemented. One. Secondly, 
inside of the um, terminals themselves, you know, a papa port and tinkan, when they call trailers to come, maybe 200, 300, they need to have enough space in their facility to be able to take those 200 inside their facility and not leave them on the road. That's, those are the conversations that we're trying to clean up with them. Once you give an instruction and say, at 9 o'clock, I want 200 trailers to move, container trailers to move, you must ensure that you have enough facility in your terminal to be able to take all the 200 of them off the road and put them in your facility so that once they take their containers or drop their containers, they can leave. Those are the, 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 the little glitches that we need to finalize with them. Mm. But in terms of the real I mean, blockage where citizens or residents or businesses cannot access a papa, she will have done a damn good job yeah. with that one. So we're lo looking at, if you say you've done, the, yes, you have. fixed it, the question is there's still a bit of remnant. You, if, you, if you move towards uh, uh, Ikmori, if you move towards uh, Orile, Ikmori area, you still see uh, towards uh, the, the latter part of a papa, you still see the remnant so, of those, so we uh, have, we have, those trucks. Yeah, they are know? there because CFAX is on the right end, so yeah. it's a container terminal. They are supposed to also get into their facility. Part of the problem is that a lot of them don't have enough parking inside their facility, so they end up tailing back, tailing back on the road. That's one. Secondly, we also need to fix the road approaching before you climb the Jora Bridge. Right? It's a federal government road. We've spoken to um, the federal controller. We're just waiting for them. If they don't, we're going to raise funding to be able to fix it. You know, that, that part also slows them down. You know, those are the two challenges that all of them need to just ensure that they have enough parking to take their trailers off the road. Some parts of Lagos, which you mentioned, Jijora, uh, some parts of th those areas are in a uh, horrible state, and we're going to more or less like, like squalors. Uh, we'll get into that in a moment. But since we're talking about Apapa and yeah. the Greenlock, let's talk about Greenlock. Uh, it seems Lagos is becoming impossible with Greenlocks these days. And one question would be, maybe because of construction in some areas, but if you look at the lucky access, it's horrendous. What is happening in that area? Do you have a solution to these gridlocks? You see, everybody wants a bridge. Nobody wants it in front of his house. We cannot eat an omelette without breaking the egg. Show Lekki Corridor is the highest developed real estate sector in the whole of Africa in the last 10 years. It has ballooned at a rate and at, the ex and, and, and at a level that is unimaginable. So, but what have we done? We're not a government about excuses. We need to fix it, and we're fixing it. What have we done? From the stretch of the first roundabout to Aja, we've cleaned up that entire place. We remove all the roundabouts, which either usually tail back, right, to seamless roundabouts that just have traffic signals, which people obey, and is, and is clean up that place. The places where traffic now starts from is from Chevron. Chevron towards Aja. And I, take, and I take responsibility because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get them off that main road. We're building a 9.6 kilometer regional road that comes from VGC that is going to go all the way through Ajiron, cover, we're doing a bridge, it has a bridge, it goes over water as well, the road, right? And it goes to drop them at Freedom Road. That is the road that appears that is causing, you know, that caused that, that, that discomfort in the last four, five, six months. And the, news, the good news is that, you know, the pairs are out. That means the hand, you know, of the bridge. Because it has to drop, you know, it has to have an overcliff when it finally comes on, 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 on the, um, on the um, Lake Express. The bridge has to come down. That overcliff is what has cost, because they need to drill 40, 50 meters down. Mm -hmm. But they've completed those pairs now. Those pairs have been completed. So there's a bit of a better movement, you know, on that. Mm -hmm. one, one of and, the biggest fears, yes, Governor, yes. is the fact that crime, are committed in those traffic. So, and people are now stalking it, and when crime, they do not have any help. And, and it's rather unfortunate, you know, but, and, and, and we, we take it, and that's why we have said to the RRS, we need to increase, you know, and improve, you know, security and police pin down at those places, you know, and, and we're, we're lighting up the whole place. You know, so it's, it's a double-edged challenge. Hmm. If you want relief two years down the line, something needs to happen. It's for them, 10 kilometers of road. That's a complete bypass that reduces, it's six lanes we're doing, Shehun. The express road right now is four lanes. It's six lanes we're doing the bypass. 
10 kilometers. So the, the pain will be temporary. It will that's be temporary. That's what you're promising that, that's, that's, So what, the, you, you, told, you spoke about alternatives. Yes. Water transportation. Yes. But the operators have criticized your government that, look, you, you, bureaucracy, government policy, and all these bottlenecks have not allowed it to function. Are you going to make any significant change? Because if you have alternative to people getting on the road, it will decrease uh, the problem on the roads in Lagos. And I appreciate, you know, one third of Lagos is water, by the way. And so what have we done? In the last three years, we're building 15 terminal jetties concurrently. As I speak, seven are ready. I can take you on a commissioning tour next week. Liverpool, Ijegwenegba, um, Itoumu, Ilashe, Badagri. In fact, there are two in Badagri. They are ready. The others are about 60-70%. Are you opening it up for mass transportation, mass transportation to, to, to private sector us. to be Absolutely. able to... Absolutely. In fact, The, the have... complaints are that your, 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 your people yeah. in the government yeah. are not aligning it to work. No, the bureaucracy so, is so too much. It's, it's not bureaucracy, it's just regulation. Regulation is different. Because it's water transportation, you need to have certain regulation. Transportation on water needs to be a lot more safety conscious. What we're saying is that nobody can board any boat without a life jacket. Simple. We're the ones doing all the channelization. We're the ones doing all the dredging. We're also commissioning, if you must know, a command and control center for the waterways. I've built CCTV cameras close to waterways. It's ready for commissioning in Falomon. So that even if there's a search and rescue, we know where it is. I bought, you know, um, 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 boats, uh, boats, like an hospital, um, boat clinic boats that we're commissioning. They are here in Lagos. We have rescue people that we have trained that we've been equipped, that are here. So what the operators are saying, which I'm meeting them later this week, is that, yes, Mr. Governor, we, are, we want to support you. We want to also buy more boats. We don't want to do it all. We've increased the fleet from 10 to 27 or 24 right now, but we want to support you. And we're saying we're ready for that. Let's concessions separate routes from you so that we know who is on this particular route and who is on this other route. And they've agreed with us. And we're ensuring to say that the same standards must, must obtain for everyone. And the rules are very simple. Make sure that all your passengers have life jackets. You cannot, you know, conduct movement on water after 7 o'clock, which are some of the things that people want to cheat, you know, because you don't know where there is a wreck or there is something, obstruction on, 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 on the waterways. And to, to go and rescue somebody on the, on the waterways is not a road. Right. So, so we need to ensure that we keep those regulations because we want to keep our citizens alive. Now, there are, uh, and I'm moving away from yes. those, all those down, moving into the development in the interior of Lagos State. I mean, people see uh, the Victoria Island, the Ikeja part of Lagos, but there are the places in Lagos that are more or less unbefitting for the mega status, uh, mega city status of Lagos. Uh, is there anything that you're doing into improving the lives of, go to some part of Ijorolokba, Ijorabadia, go to part of Agege, go to part of Ekwe, part of Badagri. There's some areas that if you walk into those areas, you will shed a tear. So, you know you've been staying in Abuja for too long. <laughs> you need to come back here now. No, and, and, I'll be, and I'll speak, you know, truth. I live in this city and yeah, I come I mean, to this and, city. And so. I appreciate that. <laughs> so how demography everywhere in the world works is that there's a mega city, but there's also the urban poor who buy choice. They must also be able to accommodate them. You cannot displace them because they are poor and they are poor. But you see, we need to get it out of our mentality that this area, it's poor. In Nigeria, like you said, right, we're, we're working in every part of the city. In Nigeria, the most difficult road in Nigeria, Badia, is, um, is, is a road called Obade Fadia or something like that, um, or Dele Fadia or something. They know. I mean, the watchers know what the, the road I'm talking about. We're fixing the road. We're fixing the road that is, the, is not the longest, but it's the most difficult terrain in the whole of Ijara Badia. I'm talking about drainages. I'm talking, I'm talking about uh, the shanties. I'm talking about uh, the water. I'm talking about basic so, amenities so, yeah. of the people so, of those so, areas. So the shanties, you know, the shanties, that's why I said, you must balance what demography you are dealing with and what you know, um, civil society group will also come. If you're talking of shanties, we also can go to Makoko shanties, but we're not. You know, so in those areas that you talked about, there are not shanties, there are people that are living there. But what we need to do, we need to do what we call urban regeneration. And the regeneration will come with ourselves and themselves, ensuring that we can improve their road network, which we're doing. If you go to Badagri, right, 
three, four major, major roads are happening in Badagri. Hospitals are being opened. Housing estates are being developed. There are major, major arteries are being torn up. Ekpe that you mentioned, Ekpe is like little, little London. Ekpe is like little London. All the major roads in Ekpe have been fixed. The six-lane highway that was set from Eleko Junction to Ekpe, it's befitting of them. Mm. Right now, we're doing Braithwaite Road. We're doing um, um, Sodio Yakub Road. We're fixing the phase two, phase three of the entire Ekpe network of road. If you go to um, 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 which other, Ikorudu, the same thing. It could do round about it, right? It's, it's, it's having a brand new look. Governor, let, let's move quickly to some other issues. Um, I'll take you to the area of uh, development still, and this time around the NSAS. Has Lagos recovered from the, the aftermath of NSAS? So there are two sides to, to, to it. I would say that we have recovered psychologically from it, but we are still, you know, working out the infrastructural recovery out of it because, I mean, Infrastructure is not something that will, you will fix in one day, right? Um, so with the infrastructural renewal, it's still, you know, an ongoing, you know, um, budgetary allocation, you know. Um, for example, the, the, the major cuts in Lagos, right? We're turning, we're, we're developing a 15-story, you know, edifice for, that will take, you know, about 60 cuts at once. That's kind of, that's kind of imposing structure that we're bringing back, you know, to um, negotiate high court. You know, so this will take time. But in terms of the psychology of it, I believe that my citizens and myself were out of it. Right. We've learned our lessons. We understand, you know, um, the learning and the lessons, you know, of it. It was a collateral damage that, that you, you know that, I mean, we had nothing to do with it. But that's what it is. And I'd like to ask you, yes. young people and the metropolitan residents of Lagos are darlings of NSAS. If you've heard them debate over this, you probably uh, will have an understanding. And there are the young people who are talking tough about uh, how the NSAS movement will affect the new wave of political movement in the country. Are you shaken by that? So, you know, time heals. And people, you know, in the last two years, people are more discerning. People can indeed see the reality of a one-day perception and a two-year or a one-year perception, right? Um, we're not taking anybody for granted, and we're not taking you know, anything you know, um, to chance. Conversations are going on, and what they want is not about what has happened. It's about what is this government doing to improve the lot of each and every one of us. It's about what opportunity this guy is giving to us as young people and giving us a space for us to be able to flourish you know, and get to the highest level of whatever profession we have found ourselves. And that's the conversation we're having. And that's what we're doing, right? If you come to my cabinet, right, my commissioner for finance is 34. My commissioner for agri is 38. My commissioner for innovation and technology is 33. They run, they, they run the show. That's, have you that's... been able to effectively quench the anger from the NSAS? No, you see, it's a work in progress. You know? And so everybody will have one thing that he wants or the other. But if you look at the generality of my citizens, who are the young people, they understand, they feel us. I've trained over 400,000 people in digital skills alone in Lagos. That's what they want. I've enabled a lot of people with last week, which is a Lagos State Science Research. We're giving them grants on innovation, on technology. We're not asking for money. You don't think that it, that could affect your re-election in any way? Well, that's why I'm saying we're not giving anything to chance. It's a work in progress, mm. and we're ensuring that we're talking to all stakeholders. We're collaborating with them. We're asking you, is your life, you know, when it was two, three years ago, Lagos came out of COVID. Nobody talks about that. We take it for granted. It's been a very difficult time for the government. And to, you know what? We saved this nation. I lost people. My deputy governor lost his brother. I lost the senator. I lost the honorable House of Assembly. But we saved the nation. But we came out of it stronger, bigger, and bolder. You think Lagosians will vote for you to get back in office? They've seen the experience. Shewun, at 3 a.m., who would you call? A man that has experience, that has been there, that his hand has been there, that has rolled off his sleeves to keep this city safe, the, the, the biggest city in the country, and is the safest city, is the city that gives the best opportunity on a continuous basis for three years? Is that you? That is Baba Jiri Let me, let me, Let me allow you to react to this. Yes. Um, the PDP candidate, oh. Jando Babajide, um, and he speaked a popular Nollywood actor, uh, Funke Akindele, 
as a running mate. And that has got some kind of wave uh, in Lagos State. I'd like you to react to, he knows a lot about your part because he left the APC. Do you see that as a threat in any way? Sure, you know, um, like I said, if you have an emergency at 3 a.m., who would you call? What are your chances? Do you call a man that has experience, that has gone through the trenches before, that has lived with it, that understands what the issues are, that appreciates what challenge you have, even at that 3 a.m.? Or will you leave your chance to someone that doesn't even know where the dial is, that doesn't even know what the issues of governance is? This is Lagos. This is an informed audience. This is not a tea party. We're talking of real governance. We're talking of life of 20 plus million Nigerians, bigger than the economy of Ghana, bigger than the economy of Kenya. In itself, it's a country. It's, it's not a circus. It's a real thing. And I don't want to um, despise anyone. I have the greatest respect for all of the candidates that have emerged. And the candidates of a particular party you're talking about, you know, how do you even begin to start? What were the pedigree? Do not run a business that has 100 people. You want to run an economy that has this number of people. The governance of Lagos is not... Are you willing to, to debate Sheung, the issues of Lagos absolutely. with anybody Sheung, that is running this Sheung, race? It is not a trial and error. You need to hit the ground from day one running. I know the name of all my 65 or so permanent secretaries. I know their ministries. I know what their pedigrees. I've walked through it. I've learned it. So you're the man Lagosians should vote for. I, I believe that we've earned it. And right. not because just we're talking it, because we've done it. We, we need to wrap up qu uh, quickly now. And one of the questions I would like to ask you, there's been debate. Since your principal, uh, your very good leader, um, uh, Ashwa Jubala Tinobu, got a ticket of the APC, there's been talk about what he's done in Lagos. In fact, there was a debate recently about the IGR of Lagos, how uh, Ashwa Jutinubu met it and what it has been now. Uh, we understand that it's about well over in the region of 50 uh, billion per month, uh, I mean, the IGR of Lagos. Now, the question is that, what do you have to show for it? That, that's a very fair question, you know, and um, what we have to show for it is that on a monthly basis, right, I manage the emergency of this city. Today alone, there's been four emergencies that has been reported. Today alone, I've recruited over 650 brand new fire engine, sorry, over 650 brand um, newly recruited fire service men. I've bought 64 brand new trucks that I will come, I will invite you for commissioning. I spent over a billion to, to take off the refuse in Lagos. We're creating a sanitary landfill site. That's what we're doing. We're building 16, 18 kilometers of rigid pavement road that runs into tens of billions. We're building the biggest market in the country, in Lagos. That's what we're doing. So you're telling we the Lagosians in they, trust their monies that what, their are monies are working utilized. not in the hands of third parties? Absolutely not. You can see, you can feel it. So you and I need to go on the tour round. I'm saying to you that you stayed out of this city long enough. You come, let's do, let's do a tour round so that you actually can show your audience. And you've got a rich audience. You've got an informed audience who really, really believe in you so that they see. You see, governance at this, at this stage in, a, in, in, in the level of, 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 of this nation, it cannot be a child's play, especially Lagos. And by the way, whatever figure we have, we see now, we actually can triple those figures because the opportunity is there. All right. Governor Babaji Desanolu, many thanks for coming on with this hour that you've spent in talking about what you're doing and what you hope to achieve in the next few uh, months that you have left in the first term. Thank you so much indeed Thank for you. coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. Thank you. Just before we go, everyone, and here is my final word tonight. Time for a quick family chat. And this time is for millennials and Gen Zs. Well, there is a saying that you are the future of tomorrow. Can you not let the older folks say that to you again? And here is why. I was told that uh, that same phrase, I mean, sentence growing up, and I, I'm, I'm saying it to my own children, now I have come to realize that sometimes that is an illusion. And the political elites have used that statement to deceive many young people from participating in politics early enough. Now, the 2023 election is very critical, and you as a young person cannot afford to watch on and do nothing. Tonight, I make bold to declare that young Nigerians are the real owners of this country.
Facts don't lie. Over 60% of the Nigerian population are under the age of 25 years. In 2019, out of the 80 million registered voters, over 51% were between the ages of 18 and 34, and 29.9% were between the age of 36 and 50 years. In the recently concluded continuous voter registration by ANAC, out of the 12 million registrants, 8,784,000 are between 18 and 34 years. That are whooping 71% of the old 12 million who, who uh, went for registration. Now, you see, in 2023, Gen Zs and millennials, you young people will determine who leads this country. That is, if you uh, leave the streets of social media, you have to come out on election day and perform your civic responsibility. When they say the minority may have their say, but the majority will have their way, they are right. And in 2023, you must make that happen. Have your say and have your way. It's your right. And that's my widow's mind, everyone. That's the final word for today. And thanks everyone for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.